Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Sunday. Sunday is actually one of my favorite days of the week now, honestly. I just love Sundays for getting all the things done. It's also Father's Day, so I want to give a special shout out to all the fathers out there, especially the cameraman back here, Mr. Jason, who is just the best father in the world to be dubs. That's Bruce Wayne, one of his nicknames for him. Also, special shout out to my dad, Dennis Denny. He doesn't watch this channel, but my mom does sometimes. Uh, so he's an amazing father. Happy Father's Day to him. Babs can just pass along the message. Yeah, Babs, Dennis. you pass that on. So Pass I it on to dad. Pass it on to Denny. I will see you guys soon. But anyways, today's gonna be a fun day. Jason and I do a lot of things on Sundays. It's just a busy day. It's a catch up day. I'm gonna take you guys through the day. And I also wanna share with you within this vlog how my lifestyle cut differs from what I used to do during a bodybuilding prep. It's quite different in a lot of ways yet it's also very similar in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna take you through what that all entails during today's video. So today is episode six. It is not too late to join the Summer Cut series, to join my Corey crew. You can join at any time, you guys. It's never too late, that's the point. All you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit that like button because it lets me know what videos you like, and you guys can also hit the post notification bell. That way you're notified each and every time that I do upload to the channel. And it's free. And it's free. I'm here for you as a free dietitian resource. The advice I give on here is always general. I also disclose a lot of what I'm doing just to help you guys out in your own journey of changing your behaviors and becoming healthier. The Summer Cut series is in its own playlist, so if you're behind or just starting, you guys can just hit play on that playlist and it'll take you through all the videos. I did want to give a special shout out to a couple of my Corey crew members who commented on my last video, one of them being Chastity Blessing. She said, today is my day one. Spent some time prepping my meals for the week and it took off so much stress waking up this morning prepared. Your videos always keep me on track and I look forward to them every week. Thank you and Jason for all that you do. That's awesome, Chastity. I'm glad you saw the videos, felt motivated by them and got yourself set up for success. I find the same for me too. When I get things done, I feel so much less stress, which is why I love Sundays. I do all the things to kind of set my week up for a better week, honestly, and it just feels less stressful. Also, Carly Kaharik probably butchered that, just realized you were doing this series, so I'm starting today. Caught up on the earlier vlogs from this and it influenced me to eat a healthier lunch than I had originally intended and made plans with a friend to meet up at the gym later. Thanks for your down to earth, open and friendly vlogs. I love that. It just goes to show Carly like how sometimes something so simple in your day can influence you, whether it be a positive or negative way, right? Like thankfully I motivated you in a positive way, but sometimes other people's stress and crap can make your day take a turn for the worse. So it's good to kind of be aware of what you're consuming around you, whether it's your coworkers, your loved ones, the content on social media, the energy and the vibes from what's around you can certainly influence your changes. So it's important to make sure you're surrounding yourself with people and things that really build yourself up, especially when you're working towards goals. And also just having a friend and making a gym date, you, you that accomplishes a couple of things. You get to hang out with your friends, so you're excited to go right. to the gym. And now, because you made plans with someone, if you're someone like me, yeah. that is 100% to their word, you're not gonna back out you're not from the gym. You're gonna back out, so you're gonna, you're gonna stick you're gonna to it, you're through. gonna get it done. And actually, I was gonna see Jay if you wanted to gym date with me after work one night this week, because I've been finding like switching my workout times has been helpful, but it's always hard for me after a work day to be like, <laughs> Do I really want to go or do I just want to go home and maybe take this as a rest day? So setting yourself up for success with having those supports in place. Great job. Great job. It's a huge help for any of us. We all need that support, which is why I'm doing this series. And I'm down to go with you this week. Before Jay and I head to the gym though, we're both hitting up leg day. I'm going to start my day and show you guys what I've been having each and every day because I've been loving it and I feel like it has really helped me set myself up for success with how my day starts in terms of my nutrition. So let's go show you that right now. Protein coffee has been my number one. It has been hitting the spot. I can't believe I never did this before. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Super simple. It's not really a recipe, but I thought you'd enjoy seeing it on camera. It's kind of a recipe. If you're, mix, if you're mixing things together, it's a 
recipe, it's kind right? Of a recipe. It's a recipe. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to use is the Alani New Protein Shake, the Fit Shake and Cookies and Cream. Not sponsored, you guys, by Alani New. They did gift me with a bunch of stuff, which was super cool. I'm very appreciative. I've genuinely been loving their stuff. This is probably my number one Fit Shake. I've tried a few of them, the Cookies and Cream. I think is my favorite in the protein coffee, but I haven't had a bad one. So I enjoy that I can just take something quick and convenient. It's already made up. This has three and a half grams of fat, 10 carbs, and 20 grams of protein. So I like that I have a little bit of everything there to get my day started. And I used to be someone that didn't eat a lot of times before I worked out, but I've been finding this has been really helpful for me to just feel more energized during my workouts, honestly, and making it easier to hit my protein protein goals come the end of the day. That's always been a problem for you. It's Huge. never a problem for me. I'm always like 200 easy grams of protein, right, easy. Right, and so if you've been following along, I'm doing 135 grams of protein a day, which can be challenging for me. I'm not someone who's ever gonna get that all from like meats and whole grains and legumes. I definitely need some supplements to help me get there. And that's okay, like recognize what your limitations are, what you need and implement strategies to help you follow through. For me, being okay with adding in a protein shake someday I do a protein shake and a protein bar. It is what it is. It's helping me get my protein goals in and it's helping me feel more satisfied too, which is so sick. So sick. <laughs> I love that for me. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, and I do want to touch on this because this glass is everything. I feel like what you drink out of can make or break you. This is from uh, Walmart. Jason got it for me. Like five years ago. I think it's the Martha Stewart collection. It was like 10 bucks. I need to get more, but it's this big old mason jar. It's probably like 30 to 40 ounces. Don't I would say. get the $5 Don't cheap Don't get the knock cheap off. Walmart knockoff. It's not as good. It we feels like it's going to break. And it's horrible. This one's sturdy. I bring this with me to work. It travels well. It keeps things cold. It's just a great mug. So worth the 10 bones if you can find it at Walmart. Huge thing of ice. I love a lot of ice in it. And I do measure this, you guys, more, um, not for calories. This is just the unsweetened cold brew from Starbucks. We find this at Target. I will admit it's a bit tricky to find this one in particular, but Target seems to be locally where we find it from. There is macros on this. I'll be honest. This is three carbs. This is something I never count in I my diet. I never count either. All right. Now, if I was in a bodybuilding prep, would I count this? I would because every single macro would count in a prep, whether it be three carbs or not it all can add up at the end of the day. So that's one huge difference. This is something I just don't count. I consistently don't count it. For me in a prep, that rule does not apply. I am measuring this though, you guys, because caffeine wise, I don't want to have 40 ounces of coffee. I like to do about 12, maybe 13 ounces is my ratio here of what I like for coffee to the protein shake. And as, let them know, 12 ounces is a serving. So I did 12 and a half. And this is a huge, okay, if you're a Starbucks goer, this is why I promote this because you're gonna get one coffee at Starbucks if you got like a cold brew there, it's gonna cost you $5. This gives you three servings of 12 ounces. For 450. For 450, okay? So we love this in the Corey household. I didn't think anything would stop me from going to Starbucks, and but this has. We, we've been arguing on the same side that this actually tastes better than it Starbucks. Tastes, it tastes better. Now Jason's like, do you want to go to Starbucks today? I'm like, nope, I want this little creation at home because it's my favorite. I love that I found something at home I prefer more that saves me money and just works with my nutritionals. <laughs> so you don't have to add cream. You can, honestly, the protein shake really does a nice flavor combination. What are you saying? You're getting all weird just now. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like you don't have to add cream and sugar to this with the addition of the protein shake. It kind of does that flavor for you. But just for a little extra sweetness, I do like to add in some creamer. I use the Silk Oat, yeah, oat milk creamer. This one is the oat milk, oatmeal cookie one. Also get that from Target. Why don't you show them the macros? The macros the on this. The people like to know your numbers. These I'm good numbers. With that. So uh, macros on this one tablespoon is one fat, four carbs, zero protein. So I usually do add two tablespoons of this, which is eight carbs. I do add this in. Why I add this and not the coffee? I don't know. This one adds up a little bit quicker, but I do usually do a couple tablespoons, a little bit more. 
I went over a little bit on that last one. Essentially, I usually just add in a splash, if you will. I just feel like it adds a nice little sweetness. So you could add whatever creamer you like. Next, I'm gonna add in my Fit Shake. You'll notice it's, I don't really need this on the scale anymore, but something about that, look at that. Does that not like do something for you? It's like relaxing to me, I don't know. It just, I love watching them blend together. So I can't fit the whole protein shake in just yet. So just mix it around a bit, chug a little, and then I add in the rest of my shake. Mmm. It is so, so good. The cookies and cream, it does add I that. I try it? I haven't yeah. tried that, have I? The cookies and cream with the oatmeal, oatmeal cookie combo, so cookie-licious, yes. Do you need the lid on it, or are you gonna, can you not spill it? Let me put the lid on. I want that, I want that, I want that. I haven't oh, tried it. Oh, just the shake? I haven't tried it. Oh, by itself? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show the people how you drink the shake. Can I drink the rest of it? Yeah, there's you that can. much. No, there's only a little bit there. Hopefully you get a taste of it. That's good. That tastes like cookies and cream, guys. Isn't it? The vanilla one's really Which good. Which one did too. I have? Just the chocolate? Mm -hmm. You had chocolate and you sipped my vanilla last night too. I like the vanilla. When I had the whole chocolate one, I thought it was good. Yep. And I actually thought it was cookies and cream just because It does have of a, the, yeah. Just kind of because of the packaging. Yeah. You know, similar. I was what you're looking at. That's good. Right? Thanks a lot, Inu. Even though you didn't know you're sending it to me too. I know. I appreciate it. I know, that's the thing. Like, I appreciate you uh, appreciating me. Alani knew Jason's having half of this stuff, so gift away. <laughs> Something about it so hydrating first thing in the morning, refreshing, gives me my caffeine, gives me a little bit of nutrition going into my workout. And it's something that's easily, I feel like something like this is, is something good to break your overnight fast with. I agree. It's easily digestible. Throw in like mm -hmm. a little cup of blueberries or some strawberries that are also easily digestible. Yeah. And you get your carbs in. Yeah. And then you don't have that like heavy feeling in the morning when you just literally haven't eaten in 12, 14 hours. I think that's a really good point. I think that's what limited me from having something in the morning before I used to go lift because I'd feel like uh, anything would be too heavy and would compromise my workout in a negative manner. Something like this does not at all. It just really has made a big difference in how I start my day and how I feel during my workout. I've noticed just having a bit more nutrition in me. I have better workouts. I'm getting pumps. I can see a little bit of veins coming through. It excites me. So it's been working really well for me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. You can obviously use any protein shake you like, but I like that the Fit Shake's already bottled up. So I need quick and convenient. And also, what does coffee do to the digestive system? Helps keep things moving, which we like first thing in the morning. Did you just like pan down to my colon section? I did. Wow, she's out there eating lunch, not even sharing with you guys. Can't even share your lunch with them? What? Eating lunch without them? Show them your lunch. Show you my lunch. Something that's actually quite similar to how I would eat during prep, during just a normal lifestyle cut for me is identifying some kind of staple meals that I enjoy and work them into my eating plan quite routinely actually. So even when I was in prep, there was periods of times where I'd follow a meal plan, meaning I'd eat the same thing literally every day for weeks on end. I've also done it where I was more of a flexible dieter, choosing what I wanted to eat on a daily basis. Even with that approach, I would often eat similar meals. And that is still true in how I go about this cut, is having meals routinely that I know fill me up, that I know are satisfying, work well with my macros. So it's something I encourage you guys to do is find those staple meals that after you eat them, you're like, man, that went over well, fit good in my macros, you know, gave me good nutrition, all that kind of stuff. So something very routine for me that I'm having today is just some lean ground turkey. This is the 99% lean ground turkey. Can we put it in the shade? Sure. So the lean ground turkey, I like regular turkey too, but the 99% lean just allows me fat to come in from other places within my diet. So that's something I have year round. I've got with it kale gnocchis that I get from Trader Joe's. I just cook those on the stove top really goes over well with me. I find that those are really quite filling for a carbohydrate source. 
uh, really enjoy those. And then having a side of fruit with it, I rotate between what fruit I eat, but this is fresh pineapple. So this is just kind of like a nice basic meal that I know gets the job done. Will be great to refuel me after an epic leg day like I had today. Your workouts are ridiculous lately with Brian. They're like, really, oh my God. They're really hard. I thought they were gonna get easier because this is week four now that I've been doing the workouts. Uh, they're not any easier. About to head into Trader Joe's, one of my favorite places to grab some groceries and things. And it's really funny because while I was thinking about it, back to when I was in prep, you guys, I honestly hated going into grocery stores. It gave me anxiety. It made me feel bad. It was just like one of those things that even though I knew I was in prep, focused on my goal, it'd be really hard for me. It was like a trigger for me to go into the grocery store and kind of see all the things not that I couldn't eat, but I was just hungry, you know, like I wanted more food. So for like the last two preps, Jason did the majority of the grocery shopping, which I much appreciated. And I remember like after a prep going into Trader Joe's, just being so happy I could go back in there and like look at the foods and be more relaxed. And it's interesting because that's where I'm at right now. Even though I'm in a cutting phase, you guys, I'm not super restricted. I'm doing this in a realistic, sustainable way. So very minor changes. So going into a grocery store, yeah, don't go in hungry, guys. But for the most part, going in a grocery store does not create anxiety with me. There's nothing that's off limits. I have a good time. I look at all the things and I enjoy myself. It's just one mental difference with a prep sometimes. Things as simple as grocery shopping, something you wouldn't think would like trigger you would literally make me angry. <laughs> I'm glad I can enjoy it now. So let's go get some goodies. But look how cute you look. Oh yeah. You look like gorgeous in that little do ensemble. Like I do like it. What is it? This is Buff Bunny, the Under the Sea collection. I think maybe one of my favorite outfits. Um, these are the citrus shorts in the teal reflection print. And then underneath I have the Siren Sports Bra in the Atlantis teal. And my favorite top, the Seven Seas Crop Top. I bought it in all the colors because I love it. So support code Kara. There is still a lot of items in stock, you guys. Mini Trader Joe's haul coming at you. Let me know if you guys find it helpful when I do share my little hauls within the videos. I never do like a full grocery haul. Jason and I tend to go to the grocery store like three times a week and collect the goods at each store that equate to everything we need. So you guys only always see like little bits and pieces of what I get for my meals. But we did go in there specifically for our shrimp. As you probably already know, we love the raw Argentinian red shrimp. They are our favorite. We usually get four bags that gets us through the week. So great protein source, low fat, high protein. Uh, with that, we also grab some ground turkey breast, 99% lean, go through a lot of that. I'll eat that usually at least once a day, sometimes twice a day for my protein source. I just find it goes over really easily where things like chicken and beef, I can only eat so much of it, but turkey, shrimp, seafood, I can eat more of that to get to my protein goals. So we stock up on those. Um, grab some fruits. We got some mango here, one of my favorite. I haven't gotten mango in a bit. Some organic raspberries and organic blueberries. And then for a little veg, I do really enjoy this roasted broccoli. Of course you can get broccoli and roast it yourself, you guys. Let me show you the macros on this though because um, this does have just a little olive oil, sea salt, and black pepper. So a serving is 60 calories, four fat, five carbs, three protein. This stuff tastes really good. What I like about it is I can honestly take this package with me to work and just portion it out and throw it in the microwave and it tastes delicious. Again, no prep makes my life easier and that's what always makes kind of a cut just that much easier for me. So I like having that stuff on hand. Um, just ensures that I'm gonna get in some vegetables. I also did grab a red bell pepper, a green bell pepper, and then I also grabbed a can of corn and a can of black beans. I am gonna make up some, I have some taco seasoning. I'm gonna do up a thing of the turkey breast to make ground turkey taco meat, and then kind of have chopped up my peppers, corn, beans, greens i've got rice i've got guacamole to make up like some burrito bowls for the week that's something that's very satisfying to me if you guys like chipotle i hear you it just doesn't go over so well in me i rather make it <laughs> just zoom into my belly <laughs> yes <laughs> cut that babes <laughs> cut that out of okay. here 
Um, it doesn't always go over so well with me digestively. I don't know if it's the sodium or what, but I prefer just making it at home. Then I know exactly what's in there. You know, that's where being in a lifestyle prep versus a real prep, I can enjoy eating meals out. Yesterday, Jason and I went to Panera Bread. I had a nice little salad, a healthy choice, if you will. This is what's great about a lifestyle cut compared to when I'm in prep. When I'm in prep, I will try to eat, not try to eat out, but like I'll try to get away with eating out a little bit, I should say, and it always hinders my results. So you just don't have time for that in a bodybuilding cut, whereas a lifestyle prep, keep saying a lifestyle prep in a lifestyle cut this is about maintaining my real life so in my real life i do enjoy eating out i enjoy not a ton but like once twice a week either when i'm at work and want a quick bite or when I'm, jason and i are running errands i like to be able to incorporate that and not really stress some of the variability there so that is one substantial difference that is nice if you guys are just trying to make some changes and go about your own summer cut you don't have to only eat at home while that's a great option it's cheaper you know what you're putting in your body it's not the only way to do it so you will continue to see me through this series eat meals out chipotle in specific i'm gonna stay away from that i'm gonna make my burrito bowls at home they taste better anyways but moving on what else did i get um oh little snacky treat some people avoid snacks during a cut i'm not a huge snacker but at trader joe's they always get me with their snacks their organic garlic non -crack crackers or gillet oh organic garlic non crackers they're so delicious i absolutely just love these they're totally worth it for me 10 crackers is five grams of fat 19 carbs two grams of protein um it's just a little bit of carbs in there it's you know not a superfood by any means but the term superfood is kind of thrown around loosely anyway so that's a whole other tangent but i like to have crunchy snacks on hand too for me it is helpful if i'm just in the mood for a little crunch to grab a handful of crackers fit it into my day that sometimes is just something that really satisfies me i may not do that during a bodybuilding prep however because in my mind the bodybuilding goggles are on and i'm like oh it's not a good use of carbohydrates i should get something higher in fiber something more filling than a cracker moving into lifestyle i can have the crackers and it works Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I also got a little dip with it. I don't think I've tried, I feel like I've had a caramelized onion dip from Trader Joe's. This one's vegan, dairy-free. I'm not sure if I've had this one yet or not. So we'll have to taste it and see how it is. But macros aren't too shabby. Two tablespoons, 70 calories, five grams of fat, four carbs, zero protein. So sometimes I just like a little scooper of dip with whatever meal I'm having, just as like a little something a little tasty on the side, if you will, or I may dip my crackers in it. The only other thing I grabbed is my assortment of miyakis. We got the cauliflower. The cauliflower is great because I would say in terms of how much you can eat, 140 grams for the macros, you get the most bang for your buck with the cauliflower variety. Three fat, 22 carb, two protein. The sweet potato ends up being the highest in fat because it does have this butter and sage um cream milk cheese it has more things more ingredients in this one so higher fat a little higher carbohydrate on this one but it's so good um and i actually don't use all the like butter that's in there it's like frozen butter in there i kind of use less of it just because i don't really feel like i need it but this one's so good though i highly recommend it there's also nothing wrong with getting fat in your diet it's just perspective of what you enjoy and how you want to allocate your macros if you will same as you would a bank account right like it's all perspective of what is important to you and sometimes something like this i know goes over well i love it it's worth the extra fat the kale ones i love as well i'll kind of mix a little trio all together this one's a little bit higher carb than the cauliflower but relatively low in fat as well at three grams of fat per serving a little higher in carb this is 32 versus the 22 in the cauliflower this one is higher in protein though due to the kale um, and it also has chickpea flour in there too that aids in the protein content so just that would be a great option for um is this vegan friendly Sure is, that'd be a good option for my vegans, my vegetarians, get a little extra protein in there that way. That is the haul, you guys. That is it for the foods. That is it. We are gonna jump on into some workout footage from today. Jason and I went to crunch with Bruce Wayne. 
Oh, he has such a fun time there. <laughs> yes, we are allowed to bring him in there with him, but he's made so many friends. Um, you guys are seeing leg day footage from this workout, and I'm not going to speak so much to the exact workout. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. It's not raw footage, but I wanted to just touch on the differences with my training style now versus if I was in a bodybuilding prep. And I got to say, it's not... It's not a ton different, honestly. Um, I'm lifting five days a week, I'm getting in cardio. This mimics a lot of what I did in prep. And actually, I do have a 12 week to Bikini Pro course. For those of you that are looking to compete or if you're just looking for some structure while you're going about your cut, that could actually be a very helpful tool for you. I have specific workouts in there, how to adjust your macros, how to shift your mindset so that you're able to really focus on what's important. Um, so you guys can find that down below the description box. Um, go ahead and check that out. But the biggest thing I've noticed that's different, I would say, is my rest time, the rest periods that I take during my training. Because during a bodybuilding prep, I don't take much rest. Honestly, I don't focus on lifting as heavy as possible. I focus more on keeping my heart rate up, very little rest in between sets to really burn through any glycogen stores that I have. I'm just in a prep, your mindset's so different. You're truly trying to burn every single thing you have. The carbs, so that you wanna burn through all the carbs and the glycogen so you can get into that fat burning mode. Uh, same isn't necessarily true for me in a lifestyle cut. I am really focusing, and this is just my focus right now, it could shift, but I'm focusing more on just really enjoying my workouts, making sure I'm getting the most out of them, you know, really feeling the squeeze with a lot of my movements, really making sure I'm taking proper rest so that my next uh, set is as beneficial as it can be. Those are just the main differences that I notice. But for the most part, my training style in terms of my split is pretty um, comparable. In terms of cardio, obviously I'm not doing as much cardio as I would during a prep. Um, more isn't more right now in a lifestyle cut. It's more about um, keeping it realistic and sustainable for my lifestyle. So these workouts have been killer though, you guys. Like, don't be fooled kicking my actual booty, as you can see right there, which doesn't look so bad if I do say so myself. But I hope you guys did enjoy this footage. And if you enjoy the rest of the vlog or are enjoying the vlog, make sure you hit that like button. She's on. She's on. She's on. We're rolling. Her looks kind of sloppy though. You look sloppy. My shopping addiction. These are all things I purchased here. Oh, this is all the stuff you bought? Launch day yourself? This is part of what I bought launch day myself. There was more. Well, these shorts I bought too, and the white top I had on, and then all this I bought too. So yeah, it's safe to say I'm addicted. We are closing in on week four so far of my cut, you guys. And just a quick recap of where I'm at. This past week was like, one of those very stable weeks it was the first time i had seen my weight literally stay the same like to the decimal point every single day um which was quite interesting i stayed pretty much right around 117.8 all week which i know for me historically means when i stay like this it usually takes me a little bit longer to push through i feel like my body set point really lies between that like 118 to 120 point so when I start to really start burning fat and like breaking through that set point weight for myself, it takes a little bit more time. And I know that and I'm not frustrated with it at all. I'm like, yep, to be expected, keep moving right along. If I was in a bodybuilding prep, I'd probably be stressed out because usually you have that hard deadline where you need to lose X amount of weight to be around your stage weight. For me, I've got a 12 week cut in place, but it could go a little bit longer realistically. I'm not really stressed out by any kind of deadline, but I do hope to keep pushing along here and hopefully see some good changes coming up in the next couple of weeks. I think I'll do updated physique uh, for you guys probably at the six week point because that, that'll be halfway through. So we'll do a little comparison, see how far I've gone. I am gonna close out the vlog here. I hope overall I showed you little bits and pieces of how a bodybuilding prep can differ from a lifestyle cut. All in all for me, a lifestyle cut is clearly less stressful because during a bodybuilding prep, my 
life has to be second to the prep. Like I literally put prep first and everything else has to happen around it. And you know, everything is so focused on that goal. Every decision you make really dictates that end goal. Whereas during a lifestyle cut, it's like, no, I'm just gonna live my life and I'll work my cut in along with my life, if that makes sense. So it's just, it's a bit more easy because it is something I plan to sustain for the long term. It's not extreme. I don't have to make all these rash decisions. It's not that big of a deal at the end of the day, which just makes it less stressful. It keeps me in a more positive mindset with it all. I'm having a really fun time so far. I feel like I've been in a really good place with it all, not stressed about it. I'm really quite enjoying pushing myself, but also being a really Realistic with what I, the amount of work I'm putting in and the results I'm getting. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. And if you are along this journey with me, then let's just keep on pushing together. Let's just keep seeing what happens. No stress, no pressure. As one of you commented before, it's a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Is that correct? Is that how you say it? <laughs> I should know this being a runner. <laughs> It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We can pace ourselves. We do not have to have some hard deadline, regardless if you have a vacation planned or upcoming travels, it doesn't matter. Let's do this realistically so that we can maintain it long-term. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's video and I will see you in the next one.